Hello children, today we are moving to the last session of our chapter, the language of chemistry. The first term we are going to discuss here is relative atomic mass. You already know that atoms are the fundamental particles of all matter and they are extremely small in size. They cannot be seen or weighed directly under normal case. So we have to use some indirect methods to find out their atomic mass or atomic weight. We use the mass of some standard atom as a unit and then relate the masses of other atoms to it and then speak about their weight. Hence the term relative atomic mass or atomic weight is used. Scientists have chosen C12 as a unit and the mass of other atoms were compared with it. Thus the relative atomic mass or atomic weight of an element is the number of times one atom of the element is heavier than 1 by 12th times of the mass of a C12 atom. So what about the molecular mass? So relative molecular mass is obtained by adding together the relative atomic masses or atomic weights of all various atoms present in a molecule. So the relative molecular mass of an element or a compound is the number that represent how many times one molecule of the substance is heavier than 1 by 12th of the mass of an atom of C12. Now let us see some examples to, to find out the relative molecular masses of some compounds. The first one given here is copper sulfate crystals. So the formula is given here and the relative atomic masses of different elements are also given here. Usually in questions the relative atomic masses of the elements will be given but you have to know the relative atomic masses of basic elements that is from element from atomic number 1 to 20. So of copper, sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen all are given here. So we have to according to the definition what we studied here we have to add up all the relative atomic masses to find out the molecular mass of this copper sulfate crystals. Then the next one is of the molecule of ammonium sulfate. So the elements present in the molecule of ammonium sulfate are nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen. So by adding up all the atomic masses of the individual elements we can get the molecular mass of ammonium sulfate also. The important thing to note here is that you have to carefully observe the molecular formula of the given compounds so that the relative atomic masses should be accordingly multiplied with the number of times each element is present in that molecule. So that is the only thing to note here, rest you have to add up all the individual atomic masses. The next thing we are going to study here is percentage composition. Percentage composition of a compound means it is the percentage by weight of each element present in it. So the total percentage of all elements in a compound is considered as 100. So we, the, our uh, aim is to find out the percentage of each element present in that compound. So the formula is given here, percentage of an element in a compound is total weight of the element in one molecule by gram molecular weight of the compound into 100. So using this formula we have to work out some problems here. Now let us see an example to find out the percentage of nitrogen in urea. The form molecular formula of urea is given in the question and the atomic masses of individual elements present in this compound is also given here. 
So, first we will have to find out the molecular mass or RMM of urea that you already know how to calculate thus we have found that the relative molecular mass of urea as 60 amu now our question is to find out the percentage of nitrogen only in this compound so percentage of nitrogen equals weight of nitrogen by total weight of urea into 100 that is 28 by 60 into 100 which gives us 46.67 percentage. Now let us see another example. Here we have to find out the percentage composition of all the elements present in sodium carbonate. So what are the elements present here? Sodium, carbon and oxygen. So our aim is to find out the percentage composition of each of these element in this compound relative atomic masses of the individual elements are given as oxygen is 16 sodium 23 and carbon 12 now first we have to find out the molecular mass or re relative molecular mass of sodium carbonate that is 106 amu so in 106 gram of sodium carbonate 46 gram of sodium is present now we will find out the percentage of sodium present in sodium carbonate so according to the formula the percentage composition of sodium is weight of sodium by weight of the compound into 100 so that is 46 by 106 into 100 that is 43.4 in the same way you will find out the percentage of carbon in sodium carbonate that is 11.3 and the percentage of oxygen in sodium carbonate that is 45.3 now if you add up all these three percentage percent sodium carbon and oxygen you will get it as 100 percentage so work it out in your notebook now let us see another example this was the last year's 9th standard pre-board annual exam question calculate the percentage of water molecules in hydrated calcium sulfate so the formula is given for you and the relative atomic masses of all the individual elements present here are also given in the question itself. So the first step is to find out the relative molecular mass of hydrated calcium sulfate that is worked out here 172 amu. Now our a question is to find out the percentage of water molecule only in calcium hydrated calcium sulfate so you can see by looking at the formula there are two water molecules present in this compound so the percentage of the water molecule is 36 by 172 into 100 which makes it as 20.93 percentage similarly the remaining questions in your, in your exercise there are, uh, so work out those numericals also in your notebook next is empirical formula that is the last term we have to discuss in this unit the empirical formula of a compound is the simplest formula which gives simplest ratio in whole numbers of atoms of different element present in one molecule of the compound. For example, consider the compound hydrogen peroxide. You, what is the molecular formula? Yeah, H2O2. You are very familiar with it. So, empirical formula means its simplest ratio. So, cancelling the common terms, we will get the empirical formula as HO. 
that is the ratio will be 1 is to 1. So that is the empirical formula of hydrogen peroxide. Now we will see some examples to calculate the empirical formula and empirical formula mass of the compounds. So you already seen that empirical formula means simplest ratio. So in the case of the compound glucose the formula is C6H12O6. So we can cancel the common terms here. So we will get the formula the, in the simple form as C, H2 and O. Understood? So that is the empirical formula. Now empirical formula mass means it is the mass of this simplest formula. That is the empirical formula mass of glucose is the mass of CH2O. So it is the ma atomic mass of carbon is 12, of hydrogen is 1 and of oxygen as you know is 16. So the empirical formula mass of glucose becomes 30 AMU. Understood all of you? Now next example is the empirical formula of benzene. So the molecular formula of benzene is C6H6. So here also you can cancel the common terms. So the empirical formula becomes CH, the simplest form that is CH. So what will be empirical formula mass here? It will be the mass of this simplest formula that is CH. So carbon relative atomic mass is 12 and of hydrogen it is 1. So it totally it becomes 13 AMU that is the empirical formula of benzene. Now children this is numerical section so we have discussed some examples here work out all these examples in your notebook and the remaining questions in the exercise also should be worked out in your notebook only if you practice these numerical problems you can answer it smoothly thank you